All right, those circuits. Um, well, I was going to say that you should all be familiar with an incandescent light bulb, but um, maybe you're young enough that you actually haven't grown up seeing them. Um, a simple example of a resistor is an incandescent light bulb. And what an incandescent light bulb is, is that it you basically force current through a wire. And when you force current through a wire, the wire heats up and it provides light. Um, and it is partially evacuated um, so that you don't, um, so that you are less likely to get sparks and, um, And we, these, of course, have been replaced. The, the old-style incandescent light bulbs, if you guys ever get a chance to go to um, the Henry Ford Museum, you can actually see some of these old ones. Um, and they were huge light bulbs. And they, they I mean, they're, they're 100 years old, and they're still doing fine. Um, but they've been replaced by, this is a compact fluorescent light bulb. So the incandescent light bulb supplies light over a wide range of wavelengths. So you're actually including things that you can't see, um, whereas the um, compact fluorescent light bulb mainly um, provides light in the visible range. So all the, so more of the energy is going into the light that you can see. And that's why these compact fluorescent light bulbs are, are very efficient. And the LED lights are even better. Um, they are much more focused on the light that you're actually using. Okay, so here are some sample circuits where um, you can denote the light bulb as this, although sometimes we may use just the generic resistor um, because a resistor is any type of load on the circuit. Um, the symbol here means that it's a switch, um, so it can be open or closed, and this is an open switch and this is a closed switch, um, and this denotes the battery. Um, when you have, when you close the switch, you get current traveling from region of high potential around to the region of low potential. Um, and you can measure the voltage and the current. So um, when you have uh, when you have a voltmeter, a voltmeter has a very large resistance. What it's um, you put it in um, in parallel with the whatever you're trying to measure and it will measure the voltage across that. Um, and to a good approximation, you can estimate the voltmeter as having an infinite resistance um, so that none of the current is going to go through the voltmeter instead of the, the resistor that you're trying to measure. Um, now, if you, put the if you put the voltmeter in series instead of in, um, in parallel, what happens is that the current would just stop because the, voltage, uh, the um, resistance of the voltmeter is so high. Um, an ammeter actually measures the current going through um, through it, so you need the current to go through. Um, so you need to put the ammeter in series with the, um, the element that you're trying to measure. And an ammeter, an ideal ammeter, has an, a resistance of zero so that all the current will travel straight through it. Um, now you have to be careful if you're working with real ammeters because sometimes if you flip the polarity of the ammeter, it can fry it. Um, both of these devices are going to have fuses, so if you do happen to switch the, um, if you do happen to set it up wrong, you usually haven't totally broken it, but you have to go find that fuse and fix it up. So um, we talk about Ohm's law, um, and Ohm's law says that the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. Now, this is true for things that have roughly constant resistance. So Ohm's law isn't really a law. Um, it, it is valid for things that have roughly constant resistance. Um, but you can also, if Ohm's law is not followed, if you have something that does not have an effect to have a constant resistance, you can define the, resist, the resistance as the voltage divided by the current. Um, so here in this plot, what you see is the voltage um, as a function of the current, and for things that are ohmic, um, that means they follow Ohm's law, this is roughly a straight line. Yeah. So this is basically saying if it follows Ohm's law, it, it, the current voltage versus current is a straight line. 
Okay, this is another circuit element that you're going to run into. Um, it's a diode. A diode allows current in one direction only. Um, so these are, so if you have current in this case, um, the positive charge is going to travel from here to here. And then when it hits this element, it, the current is not allowed, is only, current can only go in the direction of the, um, of the diode, so it, it gets stopped here by the diode. So this is called reverse bias because the diode is pointing in the opposite of the direction of the current. So then forward bias, here I'm at the region of positive um, voltage. I'm, my potential is highest here, and I'm going to try to flow downhill. And I come here, and um, I'm going to hit. I don't notice that I don't go in this direction because the voltmeter has a near infinite resistance, so I can't. I can't go there easily. I'm going to slide down um, this direction, and now I'm going in the direction of the arrow, so I'm going to be able to pass on through. This is forward biased. Um, now, of course, a diode. So if you have, if you are traveling in the direction of the, um, remember that the slope of this line, we have V equals I R. So, well, the way, one over the slope of this line um, is the resistance. So this has a slope of one over R. Um, so your resistance is very low. So the slope of this curve goes to nearly infinity. Um, here, this is, it. this is R is approximately equal to zero for an ideal diode. Um, and then in this direction, on this side, um, the 1 over R is, um, instead of being infinite, it's roughly 0. So we have R goes to infinity on this side. Now, you'll notice that if you supply, if you go even further, so you, you give a little bit too large of a, uh, of a voltage in the opposite direction, you do start getting current flowing through this, and this is called the breakdown voltage. Eventually, if you do that to a diode, you are going to burn the diode out, and it will stop working as a diode. Okay, so um, when you have a potential difference in a conductor, um, then you will have an electric field in the conductor. When we talked about electrostatics, and we said that there is the electric field inside of a conductor is zero, that was true for electrostatics. When you have current, you no longer have a static situation. You may have um, a steady state situation, but current is actually moving through the circuit, so um, it is not a static situation. So um, in that case, you have, um, you have an, a potential difference on this side relative to this side, and so you're going to get charge flowing through um, because you have a potential difference. Okay. So then um, this is a summary of the relationship between voltage and power and amps and ohms. I'm not sure if this is useful. Um, it, you, can, you basically have an alphabet soup of different um, equations that are applicable. So you've got your Ohm's law, and um, then you have the power equals current times voltage, you can use Ohm's law to get, um, to get the equation for power in many different ways, um, and you just are rearranging equations.